So now we continue with our discussion on, on names and uh, the second part here is on environments and blocks. So this term environment is an, an important point when we discuss names and here we have a def definition. What is an em uh, environment? The set of associations between names and denotable objects which exist at runtime at a specific point in the program and at a specific, specific time during execution is called the environment or the referencing environment. So it's the set of associations. We've already talked about associations or bindings between names and denotable objects. And notice that we said that the bindings can happen uh, at different times. But uh, when we talk about the environment, we're talking about the set of associations that exist at the runtime. That's the important part. That exist at the runtime at a specific point in the program and at a specific, specific time during execution. And this uh, environment constitutes one of the principal characteristics of high-level languages. And this must be simulated in a suitable fashion by, by uh, the implementation of the language itself. So, uh, we might say that this concept of uh, environment uh, exists in our high-level language. It doesn't really uh, exist uh, in the underlying machine, but it must be simulated. It must be simulated by the underlying machine. So, it must be simulated by the implementation. So what are we talking about here? Uh, well, let, let's first uh, look at the declaration. And this is something that uh, we saw similar uh, uh, declarations in the previous lecture where we uh, introduce or declare a variable. So we're really introducing an association in the environment. Um, so if this was a, a um, uh, program that, that we would be running, then when uh, we c the, the execution comes to this uh, declaration of, the, of the, this variable x, it must be simulated. It must be simulated by the underlying machine. And what does that mean? Well, it, there, there's some kind of a binding that must be created b b between this name x and the, and the memory location. Now, we also talked about that if we have a function like f here, uh, then this is what, what was called the control abstraction, and we are associati associating a binding between the, the name f here and the set of commands uh, in the body of the, of the function. And this uh, association, um, when, whenever we call the function f, then it has to make made uh, sh the underlying machine must make sure that the set of commands in the body of the function are executed. And here's uh, the third example where we have an, a declaration of a type uh, which is also so we are also uh, 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 associating a particular name T here with the, with the type uh, T. So in all cases we are introducing some kind of an association in the environment. We also talked about that a, a particular name can denote uh, different objects. And uh, here, here is an example of that. We declare uh, an integer here phi. We give the variable phi the value 2. And notice that, that this is inside block. The block starts here with the curly brackets and ends with a curly bracket at the end. But then inside this particular block we have another block where we again introduce the variable phi. So, but in this case this is a, a of type character. In the previous case it was of the type integer. So here we have exactly this example of uh, a name that, ha that denotes different objects at different times. In, in, in the outer block, uh, it denotes an object of type integer. 
And in the second part, it denotes an uh, object of type character. And notice that the this must be simulate, simulated uh, by the underlying machine at runtime, meaning that the two types of memory location, for example, may need to be of different uh, sizes. Uh, an integer takes more space than a character, for example. But we have, as we talked about earlier, we have abstracted, abstracted away from this detail by using names, but the compiler must ensure to allocate memory that is, that is large enough for the different types of objects. We also talked about aliasing before, where we said that a single object uh, can denote uh, uh, the same name. Uh, sorry, that, I, that I, a single object is visible using different names. So we can have more than one name that represents the same object uh, in the same environment in the same environment. So here is an example where we declare x and y as, as being pointer variables. They both point to integers. Then we say x is equal to new int. So we allocate uh, uh, memory on the heap and we get back a pointer. And x uh, is that pointer. We apply dereferencing, meaning we put 5, the value 5, into the memory location that x points to. And then we say y is equal to x. Well, y is of, of the same type as x, both are pointer variables, so this means that y now points to the same object as x. Where we say, when we say object here, notice that we're talking about uh, the object is the, un, is the memory location, so y points to the same memory location as x points to. Then we say star y is equal to 10, again dereferencing. Uh, we put into the memory location pointed to by y, the value 10, and then finally we write out uh, the contents of the memory location uh, pointed to by x. So, uh, in th this case we should get 10, right, because y and x are aliases. They, th th we have two different names that uh, represent the same object. So the names x and y denote two different variables, which, however, after the execution of the assignment command x is equal to y, uh, actually y is equal to x, it should be, uh, allow to access the same memory location. So this should be y is equal to x, not x e equal to y. Now I mentioned earlier the concept of block. And this was the example where block we have curly brackets here. This is might be C or C plus plus or Java. And this is uh, one of the fundamental uh, 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 methods to organize uh, uh, the environment. So we use blocks to to for the organization of the environment. So what is a block? Uh, a block is a textual region of the program identified by a start sign and an end sign, which can contain some declarations that are local to the region. So if you go back to our example, block is a textual region that is identified by a start sign and, a, and an end sign. So the start sign is a curly bracket that points to the left, and the end sign is a curly bracket here that, that um, points to the right. Uh, and notice that inside this particular block, we have some text and we actually have another block, in, inner block, inside the, out, the outer block. So, in the, there are different start and end signs in different languages. For example, we have begin and end for languages in the alcohol family. What languages are in the alcohol family? For example, Pascal uh, and Modula. Uh, we have braces or curly brackets for C or C++ and Java, like the one that we saw, saw in, the, in the example. We have round brackets for Lisp in, in its, uh, and its dialect. Lisp is, some, is a language that we will 
uh, talk about later when we uh, discuss functional programming or functional programming languages. And we have um, um, reserved words like let in in another functional language called ML. So we have these different signs that are used for the different languages, but they all represent really the same thing. Uh, they represent blocks, a textual region of the program which can contain declarations that are local to the region. So when here in the outer block we have a, a uh, uh, declaration, the declaration of the variable phi, which is local to this particular block. And in the inner block we have a, a, another declaration of phi of the type character and that declaration is local to the inner block. Now, uh, the types of blocks are two, ki uh, uh, two kinds. The, the, these are blocks that are, uh, first uh, those are blocks that are associated with a procedure or function. So uh, that really corresponds to the textual uh, uh, to the to the textual region of the body of the procedure itself, extended also with the declaration of formal parameters. So if we go back to the example here of uh, f, uh, notice here that when we declare f, we start with uh, putting blocks around the the body of the function. So uh, the block that is associated with the function f contains the statements in the body of the of the function and actually along with the formal parameters in this particular example we don't have any formal parameters uh, in the declaration of uh, the function f but uh, that should be included because we might have some uh, parameters like int x in the header here and that would mean that the value that the variable x is uh, known in the is accessible in the body of the function so we have blocks that are associated with a procedure or function uh, and then we have what are called inline blocks which uh, and those are blocks which do not corresponds to a declaration of a procedure but can in general appear in any po position where a command, command can appear and we have indeed seen an example of this here we have a block that is not associated with a function or a procedure but uh, could be uh, put in a place wherever we can put a, a statement so we start the block when we have some declarations and then we close the block. Now an important point regarding uh, blocks and the environment is the visibility. What does that mean? Uh, and here it's referred to as the visibility rule. So a declaration local to a block is visible in that block and in all the blocks listed within it, unless there is a new declaration of the same name in that block, in the same block. If we have a new declaration, the block which contains the redefinition hides the previous one. Once again, it's good to look at our example here. When we declare a variable inside a block, the question is, where is it visible? And the visibility rules is telling us that it's visible inside the block where it's declared in. But it's also visible in other blocks that are declared inside the previous block. So if we have a, an example like this and let's say we have a block starting here 
we say phi is equal to 2 and then we start a new block we say phi is equal to 1 then this is perfectly legal uh, we're saying that a declaration inside a block is visible in that particular block and also in the blocks listed within it so this phi, this assignment, phi is equal to 1 uh, refers to the phi variable that is declared in the outer block now in our example here there's a redefinition or a redeclaration so phi here is a different even though it's the same name it represents a different object so when we redeclare the the, the the variable or the name it denotes in this example the, a character type so that means that our phi as an integer is not visible inside the inner block and that's what the visibility rule is really saying a declaration local to a block is visible in that block and in all the blocks listed within it unless unless there is a new declaration of the same name in that same block in that case if we have a read declaration or redefinition uh, in the block which contains the redefinition the new declaration hides the previous one it hides it now if we look at the different types of environments that are associated uh, with a block uh, we can have th there are three types it's called the local environment it's called the non-local environment and it's called the global environment so let's have a look what is the local environment this uh, is composed of the set of associations for names declared locally to the block uh, if the block is for a procedure the local environment contains also the association for the formal parameters so this is uh, an example of the things that we did here uh, this is a local environment because we have a set of associations for names that are declared locally for the block we have a name here that is declared locally for for the block and uh, if we have a, a function then we also have a local environment uh, as we say here if the block is for a procedure or a function the local environment contains also the association for the formal parameters so it also contains the, uh, the formal parameter and it has the local declarations and the formal parameters that's the local environment the non-local environment is the environment formed from the association for names which are visible from inside a block but which have not been declared locally so those are, those are uh, uh, visible from inside a block but which have not been declared locally and that is uh, ex the, uh, an example of that is exactly uh, this uh, assignment here phi is equal to 1 this is a non-local uh, reference uh, we, this phi has not been declared locally meaning it has not been declared locally in the inner block but it's still visible because it's declared uh, in the outer block so it is uh, a name which is visible from inside a block but has not been declared locally and then we have a global environment which is the environment formed from associations created when the program execution began so this is really uh, an association for names which can be used in all blocks forming the program and what would be an example of that well if this was uh, let's say this uh, we have a main here and let's say that at one point 
in main we refer to the variable x where we say x is equal to 2. Now notice here that x is not declared locally in main. So uh, this would mean in C or C++ on Java that we would get the compile time error because x we cannot uh, uh, refer to the name x. It's not known in this environment. But if x was declared globally in C or C++, you would uh, do it this way. x is declared globally outside any block. So it's visible actually in every block. So that would be called the global, the global environment. The environment formed from associations created when the progress execution began. It contains the association for names which can be used in all blocks forming the program. So let's have a look at uh, different environments here. Uh, so we have a number of blocks here that are named. We have the block A that starts at the top. We have block B. Uh, inside the block B we have actually two blocks, the block C and block D. And uh, each of these blocks uh, declare their own uh, local variables. So for example, A declares the local variable A. The block capital A has the local variable lowercase a. B has uh, lowercase b and c. Uh, c has a redefinition notice. Int c is equal to 3 here is a redefinition because the variable c that is declared locally in b is also access accessible in the block c but since we have a redefinition we hide the block c hides the association of the variable c here and then finally in block d we it has a, a local declaration of the variable e so what happens here if we run this program uh, there's a write statement in C and there's a write statement in, in, in block D. So at the point of uh, at the point of the assignment here in block C where we have D is equal to A plus B plus C, we need to figure out what uh, Val what, what the values for the given variables are. And to try to find out what the values are, we have to find out what uh, bindings are are, uh, are legal at that point. Uh, so a here, what is the value of the variable a? Well, that's not difficult because there's only a single a that is uh, in this uh, pro single variable with the name a in the program. That's a equal to 1 up in block a. And why is it visible inside the block c? Well, because c is really part of the block a. c is within the block a. That was one of the uh, uh, part of the visibility rule. So a has the value 1. b has the value 2 because it's declared locally in, in block B and C is uh, uh, inside block B. Uh, the variable C has the value 3 because it's redefined here in block C. It does not have the value 2 because this declaration in C is equal to 2 is hidden once we redefine C inside block capital C. So we have uh, A has a value 1, B has a value 2, and C has value 3, so we get 6 out of this. D has the value 6 when you print it out. What about uh, the block D here? We have, uh, it declares the, the local variable E, and then says E is equal to A plus B plus C. A has the value 1 as before, it's declared up in block A. B has the value 2 as earlier, it has it declared the given a value in block B and C now has the value 2 because uh, this C is actually the C declared in block B. Of course it doesn't, doesn't have the value 3 because C inside block C, the, va the variable C inside block C is local. It's not accessible inside block D. 
So we have 1 plus 2 plus 2, which is 5. So 5 is written out here. So notice that we have here what are called nested blocks, meaning blocks inside bl other blocks, and they have different environments. Remember what an environment is a set of bindings, set of associations, and they have different environment, uh, environments, uh, different set of associations at uh, different times in the program. So finally, let's uh, look at the uh, operations on the environments. Uh, and we've actually seen that there are some changes that are made to the environment at the entry to and an ex exit from a, block, from a block. So when we were looking at this program, we noticed that the environment really changed. When we exited the block C, we had a different environment when we came into block D. For example, the the uh, variable uh, C here was not any more visible in the block D. So something changes when we when we enter uh, blocks and uh, when we exit blocks. And what can happen? Well, first of all, there there is some creation of an association between names and and uh, denotable objects. So, uh, for example, when we when we uh, enter a new block uh, containing some local uh, declarations, then an, an association is made. So one example of that is here. When we enter a block that has a local declaration, int c is equal to 3, then we are associating uh, uh, the name c with a memory location and it has the value 3. Uh, when we refer to an object, uh, we do it uh, by a name, and that happens also inside blocks when we do something like D is equal to A plus B plus C. We are referring to D, and that happens inside the block. We, the uh, deactivation of an association, of association between names and denoted object. This happens when we enter a block in which a new association for the name is created. So, once again, we can take this example inside block C. When we have the declaration int c is equal to 3, then there's a deactivation of the previous uh, association inside block B. Because uh, the association inside block B, the binding there, is not visible inside C. So there's a deactivation of the previous association. Remember, uh, when we redefine a variable, it hides the previous definition. Uh, then we need to reactivate an association. So there's, a, as we said earlier, there's a deactivation, but there's also a reactivation. And that happens when we leave a block in which a new association for a name is created lo locally. Uh, when we go to when we leave block C here and, and we start executing the code inside block D, there is a reactivation of the association for the variable C. Because uh, uh, C the the association in block C is not any longer alive. And the association coming from block B must be reactivated in the environment for block D. And finally, there, there must be some kind of a destruction of an association between names and denoted object. And this happens when we, uh, uh, when we exit a block in which these associations were created. So, for example, when we uh, when we exit uh, the block D here, the um, association for the variable E is uh, destroyed. And uh, when we exit block A, the association for uh, the variable A is destroyed. 
meaning that it's not anymore um, uh, the the variable a, a is not any more associated with the a particular object or a particular memory location outside block A. Uh, 